turn 21 in this playthrough of Auburn Crown 0.4 and I'm feeling deja vu because I did narrate this turn but it did So Mutina is um, lucky in this turn to have rain. So it uh, the effects of the attacks against it which have been uh, forming for a number of turns uh, negated or at least affected to a certain extent. They are, well it's not negated, they're lessened. Now the poor dwarves of Iron Lord still continue to resist uh, Nort Delm and the Giants, but uh, that won't last much longer, maybe a couple of turns at most. The slaves and gladiators of the area around Turiaso Tur Silbus have, uh, have rebelled against the Potentian overlords. Uh, and they are mounting a, a rebellion, as I say, and have claimed the, uh, the region of Libeslavia as their homeland. How long are they going to last for? Well, it's always up in the air. The Dreadworm continues to fight back. He's used his, his uh, fanatics in that turn. Alright, we didn't lose too much, and he lost his fanatics. They're... they're I find anyway that they're best for uh, taking out units that are already down to two or three points or one point, obviously, and um, they're very effective at that because they can they can the, the, the thinking process of what's going on with the fanat the fanatics is that they can either uh, fly in, teleport in, or even fight their way past guards. Uh, they don't really care for their own lives, and so doing that is not really such a big deal and then they can kill off whatever it is that they're trying to attack and then they themselves are uh, destroyed as well. Alright, so looking around the map a bit, looking at Utena here, uh, my opponent Beriand has said uh, Tribal League could uh, bail them out, and that's the Ancients, but sad times anyway. And Double Rebellion always loved those 12 strength elite immortal slaves. Well, <laughs> yes, they were. In the previous, uh, in previous versions, they were elites, but now they are, in fact, veterans, which means that they are much less immortal. So, at this point, you can see that he is attacking from the north and from the east. Uh, and the the gladiator leader will need to work out how to defend what uh, what little area they've got. Of course, they won't last forever, but they will last for a, a bit of time and cause a bit of consternation. When we get to the end, and I show you the um, the balance sheet, I realise that. Uh, that there was an issue about that that I should have been thinking of when I decided to accept the offer to uh, fund the, uh, the, the Gladiator Rebellion. For now, we're just going to put ourselves in the best defensive position that we can. Back to Angnord and the Dreadworm is still going to be a problem. Hopefully I can do a bit more damage this turn. around the place <laughs> to myself um, now how much is the unit in the town or on the other side of the river from the town okay so we should be able to finish them off oh <laughs> yeah took longer it took more than I than I anticipated Do a bit of damage to them, and I can't let that one to the north escape, so do some damage to them. Leaves me a bit vulnerable. 
with the Crystallis Knights there. But I am getting much closer to uh, finishing off this pesky dragon. some decent units over to the west of him. I need to know what to do because those um, elites that he's got there will be very difficult to dislodge. In fact, I mean not to. I mean just go straight for more bright rather than to try and take that, that unit out first. So, this could, be, this could be dangerous. Anyway, as the saying goes, you can't make an omelette without breaking some eggs. So, if I uh, lose some units, then I'll just remind myself that they're pixels on the screen, not real people. All right, over in the east, I haven't seen any Vikings around, so I'm going to have a bit of a scout to see if I can find any. Nope. Must be further to the east. And it's time to start using these ships. They've been sitting out there in the bay for too long, and uh, I'll uh, do something with them. Iron Lord, before it goes down, will have to try and do as much as much damage as it possibly can. They submit to the overlordship of King Agnason and his giant allies. I'm just going to have a look past Trondheim, see what's in the port there. And um, I'm going to start a blockade of Trondheim. Next turn, I'll uh, start moving down towards Sigretheim as well, which is the alternative capital. Vikings and move at normal pace rather than run into something while I'm in full sail. Join the blockade of Trondheim. Just checking that there's nothing in those two ports. Hedeby and Gotland, and there isn't. And look, with 137 gold pieces, I could put it into scouting, but. Uh, I'll save it up and try and get magic. Over to Angford and Moradon, moving up their veteran units. We'll start moving them out either next turn or the turn after. But over here to Mutina, I've got to make sure that I get that leader from being in that exposed position. Uh, Rinaldo. And we'll move the veteran units to give um, Sadia, the capital, a bit of breathing space. The veteran units probably only last one turn, maybe two. And I will upgrade these other units, but only with weapons and armor. Uh, I wouldn't tell the mutant ambassador this to his face, but they're not worth the extra for March information. That cost 15% of their value, so it's a it's a lot of cash, and we've already invested 
about 250 gold pieces or we will invest 250 gold pieces in their rebellion anyway which is pretty much doomed to failure its main purpose is to to cause problems for any Dania and lessen their production as well as holding them back a bit and I'll hold off on buying anything so that I can get magic for Angford as well at least the technology the research the ancients have got a reasonable amount of gold in their treasury we'll really need every penny of it they didn't have pennies but hey you know what I mean let's uh, leave that veteran unit there move the air warriors out of Danova it's not really worth defending that put into research but like I said uh, at this stage I think I'm just going to be spending all that money on new units veterans first infantry next and if I get magic in time I'll certainly invest in a specialist unit too over to Malkan and they're getting ready to attack and it's time to start an attack I can only see that one unit, or at least one unit towards Guartenheim. And now I can see a whole heap, including those two fanatics. So they're very handy for finishing off uh, damaged units. Like I said before, when we were talking about the, the Dreadworm. So I've got to make sure that I don't leave my units too low on strength points. Otherwise, they will be sitting ducks for those fanatics. Now, I'm just going to check here because I'm not sure how much or what effect attacks from militias or garrisons have on units. So I'm just having a look at their statistics and the 61 readiness, 72. Yeah, it does have an effect. Not much, but an effect. Probably about 5%, I guess. But it's enough. It's enough to actually start the attack and to weaken defenders a bit. Alright, so we'll finish them off. I do not want to get stuck there though, so I'm going to swap out the militia for the elites and move the militia back because it's got enough strength points to do that. Alright, that's the start of the offensive uh, at this stage. That's as far as I'm going to go. I anticipate I might lose that uh, that elite unit there with the two fanatics and the attack of the elites due north of them. I imagine that I'll probably get, get taken out. We'll see next turn. Diplomacy, yeah, one more into three down. No, we'll save that, I think. Over to the Tribal League. Yep, continue to mobilize as much as we can our potential allies on the continent. some more into invasion a second shit into invasion because it's getting closer to the time where I will be sending the tribal league units uh, off the continent and attacking different uh, different places but at the moment they're basically spending most of their time trying to convince their neighbors that hey you know back us we're, we're a good bet and being a nuisance on the seas. I'm going to help gain the fleet up here. And their supply indicates that they need to start thinking about moving back to port. They could go down to the um, 
Tribal League ports. Family, friends, nice Angford ale in the taverns. Okay, looking around, we've moved to Usna with those fleets. Turn. Let's have a look. Now, what I was saying about the um, the Yugoslavia um, rebellion is that the the country that supports it, that funds it, is the ancients. I didn't consider that when I made the made the decision, and so what that means is the ancients, who need every penny that they've got, will now be spending a hundred gold pieces over five turns uh, to fund this rebellion. So. If I had have remembered that at the time of the decision, I might not have taken it. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I might not have taken it. So you can see that they're only on 93 gold pieces each turn. Uh, that is going to be more of an issue as time goes on. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next turn.